morning ladies and gentlemen welcome along to the vlog we're in this morning so you can see this is the grain from yesterday just jumping straight into it uh, it's drained overnight a little bit so that if we'd have had the old floor that would have been on the floor obviously in the concrete <clears throat> or conversely we used to put them outside and that would be outside and then they'd have to jet wash the area quite regularly but this morning I can just come in and hose that away not a problem today and then we've got the HLT pumping into the mash tun I've just got to put the water chemicals in there some calcium chloride and some gypsum and if we have a look in the boil kettle this is after a few hours of recirculating this morning and as you can see it's done an extremely good job of getting all the grime off the side of the tanks so I'm going to rinse this out put some acid in there and uh, give it a quick sanitise through the plate chiller it doesn't have to be the boil kettle just the plate chiller and the hoses really and then it's ready for knockout from the mash tun it's a really quite simple and effective way of cleaning your tanks there's the cleaner it's, it looks quite clean in there doesn't it so yeah I'm really pleased with this and if you're unsure as to what we're using well we go to a company called Niche Solutions and we order Cosgleam Plus so I picked up a couple of step bits from tool station this morning to replace my old one which is alright until it gets to about I don't know the 20 mil stage and it's completely dickhead so that's gonna be that it's gonna allow me to drill the holes in the pressure lids for the all-rounders so I can show you how I fit them on the uh, on the new ones which we bought accidentally but I also want to show you the labeling machine so Jim's labeling at the minute and we'll just have a look at how it's going so I had to iron a few creases out this morning I had to reset the light sensor which is the little thing down there which kind of stops the paper advancing forwards when it hits a gap between the two sheets because the light goes through the backing paper the numbers are starting to fade can I um... yeah turn up just up by five degrees or so and then obviously this heated section here heats up and stamps the date through this waxed paper but if you get it too hot watch there we go if you get it too hot it burns straight through the paper so it's a case of fine tuning I think what what you're on about 120 105 120 just over 125 so yeah anyway too hot burns through the wax paper um, so that needed balancing as well and then also something else I had the paper running down this side of this like roller if you like it's not a roller but you know what I mean and it was bringing it too close to the heater block which was causing the paper to distort which meant that when it was feeding onto this outfeed roller it was all feeding on one side and it was pulling it out of centre which made it quite tricky yeah, difficult or tricky to having well we had to keep adjusting it and pulling it across so it stayed in the centre of those rollers so it's been a bit of a cock around this morning to get it all working properly but it looks like it's going well now maybe so we've got a smash wing mirror it's been smashed for months actually and I uh, thought well got a bit of time between now and the end of the boil uh, so I thought I'd change it water to what it turned out to be I've had to drill two of the bolts out they were like this almost like tech screw styly and the heads just sheared straight off and left like that captive washer kind of thing behind so uh, I'm just gonna fit the new one now I've fabricated some new styly bolts 
which will be easier for me to get to because I've had to do all that through a hole about that size so because I couldn't do it I've uh, I've done that instead you're trying to do your lights yourself uh, wash your back yeah, mate. yeah go for it <laughs> you're trying to do your lights yourself then no, I was just setting you up, I thought you'd done this already. No, no, I just need to put this back on. I've had to cut into plastic, you see, to get it all off. Look, look at that. You can really see that in there, mm -hmm. where I kind of had to chew all that bolt and everything up. I mean, they made it basically impossible to get at, didn't they? So, new light. You watch next thing, this connection will be different. Ah, oh, no, it's not. It's got moves. So that goes in there. And then that goes up there. And then I've got to try and get this in the hole. I'm trying to get one shot at this. Ah, oh, it's going to need to. a bit. Right. You watch, I'll get them all in. Apart from last one. And then not last one, I'll drop the bloody bolt. Right, so I'll just screw that in there. At least I've hit that one, haven't I? Right, that's on. That one looks all right. This one's not. This is the deepest hole. Yeah, that one don't want to go. Oh, I think I just got it. That was more luck than judgment, I think. We'll get that one in. It's quite a bit of filler for the vlog, isn't it? And then this last one. Don't drop it. I suppose we should check if that indicator light works as well, eh? Um, I think you need the keys in for the hazard lights to work, do you? No. Let's go and check it then. Yeah, working. That works, that works. Oh, you little beauty. That's what we think to that. Three little cover caps. One, two, three. Shall we see if Stuart notices when he comes back? Right. You turn the hazards off. Oh shit. Your see. Right, come on, let's have a look at yours then now. Oh, something's not closed right. Did it make your job? A little bit. Over this door. Yeah, there we go. Right, what's your way in here then? What light's gone? This right indicator light. This one here? Yeah. What you got to get to, isn't it back? Yeah, so you take that black, this panel off, this one comes off. Oh, it just pops out? Yeah. How did you get it out? Front lights, so, yeah, that way. Oh, I see. And a couple of nuts. I think it said it was a 10 inch. What? That's massive. Well, maybe not 10 inch then. 
ten something. Ten millimetre. I'm so it said inch. I know ten inches massive. No, I've said it. That's three eighths. That's a nine. I can't find a ten. Nine. Another three eighths. That one fits. Little extension bar. I don't think this ratchet actually works. If it does, yeah, it seems to. Just the two nuts. You got your bulb, is it in the back of the car? It's just there. Uh... I can see it. Seems like every kind of time they come up with a new design for a car, they make it more and more difficult for you to do simple things. Oh, yeah. What's holding that up there? Looks like there's a screw up there. From what I read, it said it'd be quite stiff to get out, but it should come. And then there's a cable in the back. Oh yeah, it's got a couple of retaining clips on top and bottom there. Yeah. These hold onto this little bulbous tip end. Oh yeah. Hi. Oh, bulbous. Yeah, we don't need to undo cable, I don't think. Because we'll just pull that out. And we'll take your bulb out. Oh, I don't like these matrixes that they get corroded and start looking a right mess. We had these on the on the transit, I had to buy some new ones. Just making sure it weren't a three pin. Don't want to go in that way. There we go. So that was handed, that bulb. Put that in there. Put that in there. Do you want to just go and check your indicators before it's put together? Is it open? Yeah. We're getting the torque wrench out for these nuts, do we? Oh, make sure that uh, clips pop in correctly. Click! Oh, one click too far. There we go. Simple as that. Get a shot from behind my best angle. There we go. Right, I did promise that we'd get round to drilling out the holes on these uh, lids for the all-rounders. So I'm just going to take these two, they're, like, they're basically just like pop bottle caps. It's really quite ingenious that they've figured that out. One thing I don't have for this is a thermo well. So I've got some 3.8 steel tubes such as this stuff and I've ordered a bulkhead fitting, that's what these are, these are 3.8 to half inch BSP bulkhead fittings. So I've ordered one which we're going to turn into a thermo well. So we have to take these fittings off here anyway if we're going to install this cooling coil. And they are a bit stiff but just pull the, pull the old uh, condom back there and Oh, she comes. Beautiful. So, I'm just going to go and check on my other two which holes I drilled because I want them all to be uniform. That was easy enough. So, there's a KL marked on the black plastic just there. It will have a look if I go into the middle of the camera. Centre weighted focus, please. So, you'll see just the KL there. 
kind of shows up if a, look, a little bit. So it's the opposite that. So it'll be that one and that one is what we're going to drill out. So first things first, step bit. Brand new one, so this should work a treat. And we're going to find the opposite, which is that one there. There's a little dimple already in there to help us centre the drill bit. Oh, and they just fly through these new bits, honestly. It's a pleasure to work with them. So we're going to keep going until we've got the right size hole for our fitting to pop through. So this nut, or bolt should I say, looks quite large. So we'll probably have to keep going. Don't want to overdo it. We'll keep going to maybe the next level, which I think is going to be 20 mil. There we go. So we've reamed out a 20 mil hole, and it's a little bit tight on one side. Let's come at it from the other angle now, and there's a reason why I'm going to do this. Right. I still think we're a little bit short, but bear with me. Right, so that'll screw through. It's fairly tight. We're going to pop through. There we go. So we are definitely in at 20 mil. 20 mil on the outside and 20 mil on the inside. This should now sail through there, which it does. But I'm not going to stop there because there's a gasket on these bulkhead fittings. And I want this gasket to have somewhere to seat. So I'm going to go into the 22 mil setting. And I'm just going to start slowly taking out a little bit more of that plastic. So the O-ring has somewhere to sit and it can sit down inside like the edge of the plastic if you know where I'm coming from. That looks pretty good. Nice and tight to the bulkhead and uh, to the to the lid should I say and looks like plenty of space on the back to locate our nut there we go and that's gone on there beautifully indeed so I'll just find myself a spanner all right let's just have a look if we can get this to tweak up beautiful now bear in mind it is plastic threads so we're not going to go stupid with that because you only get one shot with these bad boys but there we are that's one bulkhead in i want to do the same again on the opposite and then we're going to have to try and wrestle to try and get these um these cooling coils in there this is how quickly it can go when you and you know what size you're going to go up to. There we go. So that should be there already. See how quick and simple that was? Beautiful. Blow out any swarf. She's fitted. Oh, that's oh, nearly threw the nut on the floor then. Did you see that? There we go. That's beautiful. So this is the tricky bit now. We need to shove this through the top. But the difficulty is uh, these want to be fed in that direction. So we have to keep the retaining clip pressed down. I'm just going to go and double check again. Make sure that the orientation this section is on the right way because I want them all to all to look the same. Yeah, got it. So the centre leg that runs up through the coil is going to the left one. 
if we've got the KL stamp bit facing us. There we go. So we're shoving these up straight through the center of both of our bulkhead fittings. And the reason we're pushing them in this way and we've not got the bulkheads the other way around is because when we pressurize this system, it's going to push upwards, which means that these will engage correctly and they'll be in the right direction. Right, I've got some silicon spray. Bit of food grade, and uh, if I just pop a little squirt in there, that should help ease us past the o ring, which we don't want to damage really. That's getting close. Right, that's past the o ring. That's past the o ring, not quite. It is now. So we're going to see in there, I don't know if we're going to be able to focus down on this. You can just see the edge of the metal and you can also see the clips on this section that kind of want to get in the way. And you have to do these almost together because they fight each other. You see how it's lifting, lifting that edge up. We want to keep that down as we come up and through. And then this one as well. The reason being, the first one that goes through kind of puts the other one at a little bit of an angle. But that uh, that lubricant certainly helped. That was a lot easier than the ones that I did just the other day. So there we go, pushing through nicely, and I'm happy with probably that much stick out on the top. And then if I try and push it down anymore without compressing these sections, they lock into place, look. So pressure can't push this out if there's pressure in the, in the keg. So that's one done. Just have to screw the quick disconnects in there. And then when we've got the bulkhead fittings arrive from uh, online, I'll just drill another hole there and it'll be similar to just installing a single one of these from the bottom. Hope that helps you if you're doing yours. That was pretty painless, don't you think? Fantastically, the brew day is already coming to a close. We're chilling at the minute, and then we're going to do a 30 minute whirlpool, Steve. But I just thought I'd show you the setup, the fermentation station. So, obviously, as I mentioned before, I think on yesterday's vlog, I didn't intend to have four of these Firmzilla all around us in one go. Just two. One to ferment in and one to allow me to transfer. But I've ended up with four of them. So I guess uh, I can ferment in three and I can transfer into another one. Cold crash, ready for bottling straight out of that one or canning. And then uh, I can use the other one to brew another beer, so we can effectively have four beers on the go with this system. And I think the first one that we're going to do is probably a raspberry sour with the Philly wild yeast. I'm not sure yet though, might change my mind on that. I'm really not sure, I need to come up with some recipes, but definitely I'm going to be brewing some some new beers with fruit purees and some new strains of uh, new strains of yeast. Uh, what was I going to say? Yeah, I've also ordered the straps so I can strap this onto the stands so they don't fall over. And I managed to find somewhere Brew Keg Tap it was who had the jackets in store. So the 27 litre um, Firmzilla uh, uni tanks, I think they are. Those jackets fit these as well, because these don't have the yeast collection vessel at the bottom. So I've ordered myself four jackets, and uh, yeah, and the harness or the webbing. So there we go. The brewery's looking spick and span. Just about to start digging the mash tun out when we've hit temperature for this uh, whirlpool steep, and then everything's turned off. You see for 30 minutes. 
while it just sits and rests. So I thought I may as well use that time to dig the mashton out. It's had all day to drain, which is something I started experimenting with from yesterday. And it seems to be working a treat. The grain is lighter, more friable, easier to work with. And of course, like I said yesterday, it's going to be more manageable at the other end as well for the farmer to feed to his cattle and sheep. It's ain't going to be sopping wet. Not that the sheep and cows mind, but, you know, lugging away around a wet sack. <laughs> oh, it's not always a chore, actually. Anyway, uh, I'm going to go and dig this match ton out. Well, that's all there is to it today, boys. I'm done. I'm off home. Look at this, though. 39 packs of yeast repackaged from a 10 kilo USO 5 block. And we've also got some fructzyme enzyme, which is pectolase, I believe, and some hop flour enzyme to play around with in some future recipes. And tomorrow's lunch, of course. So there we have it. That is brewery, hose down, just filling the HLT up, but everything's set to come on in the morning, as per. We've got yeast in the tank, I've taken an SG reading, I've put my Brewer's Clarity Enzyme in there, and also the yeast. Did I say yeast? The tilt. Also the tilt. Rinse the acid out of the pump. Uh, yeah, that's pretty much it. Everything's a good one. So I'm going to turn off the uh, lights and go home. Let's do it.